So I think we can start uh, with a new topic, and uh, as we are shortening time, I will try to we will try to do all in uh, in an hour, and uh, maybe next time we will continue this topic. So today I want to show you to illustrate you some unusual thing which calls con anomaly. You will see what is this, why it is anomaly, and uh, uh, how it is connected to Charles and wave. Because we worked before with titanium uh, decelerate, uh, we built it uh, a band structure, DOS, we built Fermi surface, it was uh, two or three times your homework to deal with titanium decelerate, and we are continuing to work with titanium decelerate, to build its, uh, uh, and now we'll build its uh, um, pollen dispersion. And I propose to organize our today's uh, uh, seminar uh, uh, in the next in next way. Um, I have uh, calculated before uh, phonon spectra. So I have I have done for you all of the things before step four. So step four, I didn't do. Uh, I propose today start from these calculations, do together steps four, uh, five A and five B, and uh, but few times because we have uh, uh, different uh, different folders. Maybe you have noticed it that we have uh, different folders, and uh, in my in our lab sixteen, I will show you it. So we have lab sixteen, and we have here titanium. Selenium two one, the in Selenium two two, and here in lab sixteen we have uh, two folder, two folders, titanium uh, Selenium two and titanium uh, titanium Selenium two one and titanium Selenium two two, and uh, what we will do. Uh, so uh, we have. Two uh, folders, two relax folders, which I uh, already calculated. And now you can say I can open uh, these two files uh, from one folder and from second folder. So the, the, all the differences are in uh, these relax folders. I have relaxed um, the structure with different parameters, and maybe you can uh, say you can find ten differences in this uh, files in this files so what's the main difference here how do you think it's like in a children game find find the differences it is really one very small difference and usually we didn't even uh care about this difference but here it will play very crucial part. Uh, yeah, the Gauss value. This is the only difference you see. The Gauss zero point zero zero five, and here zero point zero zero one. And I also changed smiro smirin to Fermi Dirac. Uh, so we have different. We have uh, Gauss and smirin the most is the simplest. Uh, Mansell Facton, uh, Mazari van der Bilt, Fermi Dirac, Dirac. And um, I took um, so uh, the task for the problem for this uh, um, seminar I took from a scientific paper, and they told that Fermi Dirac is the best. But for homework, you will have uh, you have to, to calculate it with another uh, smearing factor. So and main difference is yes, really the Gauss. Uh, can maybe someone explain what the Gauss means? So what happens when we change the Gauss value? The dance points in the uh, uh, as a function of uh, of momentum, and uh, with like if the key goal was exactly zero, that they will be treated uh, will be treated as points. Yes, and yes. In other case, they are treated as triangle has small, very small regions in space, and the bands. Too. And uh, the Gauss value is a uh, kind of this uh, uh, characteristic with in, 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 in energy space. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you generally you are right. You're correct. So with the Gauss, we are broadening the uh, band structure because 
in case if we have no degauss of our band structures they are just uh, um uh, you know zero dimensional lines so we have we have nothing so it's just a line with zero uh, uh with zero witness uh, and we make it closer to reality by uh broadening the, this lines and the simplest um, way to do it it's smearing it's gaussian smearing this, it means that in this in the center of this line we will have more probability to have electron in the uh in the, in, in the edges we will have lower probability but we have also uh different uh, different uh, kinds of the smearing and film dirac is one of the smearing so film dirac is like you have the step you have uh this edge uh where uh, all electrons in the one part and in other part we have very very tiny tiny part i i hope all of you can imagine what is Fermi Dirac uh, statistic. Uh, and this factor, uh, I also showed you uh, how um, important it is when we uh, made these calculations for um, car resolved DOS. So we increased this the Gauss and we saw how it broadening and uh, sometime it uh, began to be more than a band gap. So we, we, had, we had to have this is the Gauss lower than, than band gap. If, if it's bigger than band gap, so uh, everything makes no sense because uh, uh, this uh, uncertainty is too huge. Uh, okay, uh, and uh, uh, we'll see what happens if we will uh, make these changes at the very beginning. I will uh, then relaxate the structures, then I create a uh, phonon dispersion with this different the Gauss, and you'll see how huge difference can be. Uh, if you will use this the Gauss, so the Gauss is very uh, important parameter. But uh, in almost all of our seminars, we didn't care about the Gauss because we didn't need it. So it's the difference, it's main difference for uh, VC relax for uh, relaxation. This the Gauss, the Gauss value, and in all other uh, parameters, it's just common uh, titanium uh, uh, selen two. We made it in our eighth seminar, last seminar of uh, uh, previous term. So as uh, the of selen, uh, the coordinates, and so on. And then I begin to, uh, uh, re I relaxed it. I took the parameters to SCF. So I also made this SCF equation. It's like uh, uh, I took the parameters uh, sodium-1 and sodium-3. They are slightly improved. Uh, and then I took the, param the uh, atomic position. It was something like 0. 0.23 and something, and now it's 0 0.26. It changed, in cha it changed quite quite a lot. Also, I had key points 12, 12, 6. Uh, in the paper we trying to reproduce it was 16, 16, 8, but uh, I didn't had so patience to make uh, calculation with so many uh, so much uh, key points. And also, uh, important thing that I imp I um, enlarged this convergence threshold to minus 12 it's uh, uh, some uh, a condition just to have good um, phonon dose and also I've calculated uh, this phonon dispersion uh, for both cases with 0 0.5 and 0 0.1 uh, the Gauss so with this file uh, maybe it's better to, to see in so this is relaxation uh difference is in smearing is very is very important zero zero five then i made scf and filled here the uh our parameter is calculated and here is the following spectra uh calculations so for to to create uh, this plot this following dispersion plot uh i just uh, um made threshold 10 in the minus 12 uh masses of the atoms and number of phonon uh, of uh, uh, mass of phonon wave vector. We discussed it last time that uh, from this mesh uh, depends number of Q points in which we will have uh, the calculations. So each Q point stands, we, uh, each Q point have uh, some number of uh, uh, modes. Uh, by the way, how many modes will be here for titanium silen 2? Acoustic and optical modes. How much? Mm -hmm. uh, it depends on the symmetry for each Q point. Yeah, it means uh, how they will be uh, in representations. But uh, the general number of models they don't don't depend on the symmetry. 
you can simply ask it uh, uh, now in the number of atoms. We have three atoms wow. here. Each has uh, uh, three degrees of freedom. This why here nine. Yeah, three acoustic models and six optical models. Uh, before we used uh, uh, two uh, atom crystal, two atom in unit cell, and it was six models, three acoustic and six, three optical models. Okay. Uh, but uh, when I began the calculation, I, I tried to make like two, 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 and to reproduce it together in the uh, seminar, but I uh, got uh, the error. The error was uh, like, uh, it, it, it's kind of, it's not enough uh, two point mesh for this calculation. So two, two, two was not enough and it was an error. Um, and uh, then I increased it to four, four and two, two, because we have our C value uh, almost two times lower than uh, than A and B values. Yeah, um, and we got eight Q points. I have calculated them all. It took rather quite a lot of time. So each each Q each Q point it's like uh, maybe thirty or forty uh, minutes in uh, sixteen cores. So I think it's uh, really uh, if we have really a lot of cores, we can start them simultaneously all the cores. And I think in a uh, uh, time of seminar, we can calculate it. But uh, uh, without it, uh, it's like uh, we will calculate simultaneously three, then another three in in, in good uh, um, situation. Because uh, you see, uh, uh, because uh, uh, the station in the cluster, you can check it's like 13 run uh, jobs and one in the queue. So I don't think that we, we can calculate a lot uh, with uh, a lot of the key points. This will be your homework to, to do it. Uh, but we can calculate, um, but we can make post-processing. We can make post-processing uh, like Q to R and uh, Maddin and check the phone. And uh, I propose to do it uh, together. So let's uh, do it for the, uh, I'm moving to lab 16. Um, to web 16 uh, folder. Uh, here I have uh, two folders. I propose to start from the first folder. This first folder is for 0 0.005 degauss, so for huge degauss. Uh, return selling two, one. Uh, yeah, something wrong with cut because LS comma. Is very so. So I'm going to phonons mm, and uh, uh, here I have the most precious things dynamical matrix. You see, it's like zero and 13. Why not eight? Because uh, accidentally I made this creation with four, four, four Q mesh, another, uh, and it's 13 Q points for, uh, for it. But uh, eight, uh, eight is, is okay. So uh, Four, four, and two uh, is uh, generally okay. Um, okay, and we can uh, check this post-processing uh, file. Yeah, it's very simple. It's just uh, acoustic sum rule crystal uh, file. What to read? The it reads the dynamical matrices and file what to create. Titanium selenium two K four 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 FC. Force constants will be in this file. And I want also to start this calculation. I'll check uh, my my script. In script, it's like Q to R. So we, we are moving from reciprocal space to real space by this uh, by the step. And uh, so now you shouldn't change something. You should just uh, start this calculation. To subscript sh and it will take like 0 0.02 seconds yeah i can check the time cylinder 2 q to r out q 
it is very slowly. I, I think maybe uh, that 14 um, that 14 drops make something with cluster. You see, here uh, we have all this uh, all these key points. Uh, if we have four 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 key point mesh, it means that we have we should have 64 uh, key points if we have one symmetry. If we have no symmetry at all, but we have symmetry. That's why we have only 13 key points. But they, this 13 key points, so some of this key points they stands for uh, more key points. For example, this uh, key point nine stands for six key points. Yeah. So, but because we have symmetry, this crystal has symmetry, they are connected into one key point, which represents them all. It also calls star, Q, Q point star. Okay, it was 0 0.02 seconds. Uh, now we should uh, proceed with our post-processing -proce and to calculate a dynamical matrix in real space. So it's it is file titanium silen two madin in yeah. Uh, here I read uh, this file with first constants, and I tend to create uh, this frequency file. And uh, this frequency file we can uh, uh, already calculate. He, then uh, we have this masses of the atoms. And some parameters, some options, just to um, allow this uh, uh, band, this band structure uh, form. And this is our just band structure from uh, band calculation. So we we you you saw this a lot of times. It just the band structure for hexagonal for hexagonal symmetry. So for our seven two, and we will have our phonon dispersion plot in this coordinates. In this terms, uh, what we had to do, we should change time cylinder, uh, we should change our script for a DIN uh, calculation. Um, I want to change this Q2R to mat DIN. Yeah, and that's all, and we can start it, launch it. It's super slow. Yeah, I I can, I I can launch it. Q soup Q yeah. Oh, it worked. Uh, looks like it really worked. Well, I can't can't look at it because it is very slow. Like. Frequency file. Yeah, we have frequency file. Yeah, we have uh, the script. I'll show you the script. Uh, titanium silent two uh, phonons. It just is the script to uh, build this uh, phone dispersion. It's like uh, the same script we used uh, uh, last time, but uh, uh, the difference the number of key points. I just added here this key points and uh, uh, labeled them x labels. But we can we can uh, start it. And the name that I'm saying to PH005. 005, I mean the, the Gauss, the Gauss value. Okay, uh, to launch this Python the, uh, script, I had to uh, move to the uh, uh, node QSoup minus E. Yeah, I'm on the node now. Now I'm returning to this uh, folder, laboratory 16. Uh, Titanium Selen 2, 1, phonons. Yes, this is my okay. And um, 
I just had to launch the Python script, Python 3.6, Titan Selen 2, Phonons, Pine. And now let's check if it created the plot. Uh, it created. Uh, um, uh, we have um, this PNG file, so here it is. Um, it looks like uh, ra like rather common uh, plot, phone dispersion plot. Uh, we have this sync here, but it's just uh, it means that we took n n not enough uh, key points. To make uh, uh, to to destroy it. So uh, this um, gamma point is the hardest point in the cube, in the phonon calculation. So uh, it it needs a lot of k points. It needs a lot of accuracy. And maybe in some uh, in, uh, at some uh, uh, moment we hadn't uh, enough accuracy. That's why we have this small uh, small perturbation. But uh, it uh, it's just uh, like local pro local small problem. It don't affect the whole the whole uh, uh, plot. So here we have one, two, three acoustic modes. Yeah, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six uh, optical modes. Yeah, uh, they uh, they are degenerated in uh, Q point. So it's like one, two generated in one, uh, and another pair also degenerated. Uh, and we and we see here some something rather strange comparing to another um, phone dispersion plot we, we saw. You see that this acoustic model usually it goes somewhere here, something, uh, but here you see that it goes goes down at M point, and it also goes down at L point. Uh, this effect calls uh, phonon softening on the on this uh, con anomaly. Uh, but now uh, it's just uh, for softening. It doesn't cause any anomaly, and I will show you what happens if we will change uh, the Gauss from zero zero five to zero zero one. What will happen to this uh, to this plot? So let's uh, let's go uh, to uh, another folder. Ah, from I I had to exit from the from the node from the node. And now we are going to uh, another folder, Titanium Selen 2.2, with 0 0.001 the Gauss. Uh, I also go into the, this phonon folder. Uh, what I see here? I see, I see here um, eight uh, matrices. Uh, I uh, eight dynamical matrices because uh, our uh, Q mesh is like four four two, so it gives us uh, this eight uh, a biapine symmetry. It gives us eight Q points. Yeah, for each we calculate we have created dynamical matrix, and now we can uh, do the same uh, thing. Uh, let me check if if everything is okay with our script. Yeah, it should be okay. So I can launch the script. It's Q to R stage. Let's check it. Uh, it is. It should work. Yeah, it works. It works. You see, it took this eight dynamical matrices. Um, Q point zero stand. For only one Q point, next Q point, second also stand for one, but the third Q point because of the symmetry stand uh, for six Q points. The same for four, five and six stand for three Q points, seven and uh, eight for six. Why six? Because we, we have hexagonal symmetry. That's why it should be like six, three, something like this. Okay. We have done it. Uh, now we should change the script to uh, calculate dynamical matrices. Medina. 
in, in real uh, in real space Madina. Madin out, yeah. The only difference. Now I, I launch it. And it also should uh, work smoothly, I hope. Let's check Madin out. Yeah, it works okay for zero point. 13 CPU time. Okay, let's move to the uh, let's let's build the uh, plot. We are moving to the uh, node Q sub minus i. Then I return to that folder cow uh, t to to uh, mm, lab 16 uh, t to to phonons. And I launch the Python script. Script is the same name, Python. Yeah. Um, let's check. I see Igor on your face that you have already <laughs> created the uh, the plot. Yeah. Because plot is rather strange. What you? Will... So uh, all of you uh, uh, are uh, failure or C, I don't get the information from you. Did you all make it? Yes, I've done the second plot already. Okay, it's great. Yeah, we have the second plot and you see what happens. Uh, we can I can show them together the spots. You see the uh, really difference which we can say very small in this the Gauss, but it leads to really really dramatic changes in the plot, super dramatic changes. Uh, here for huge the Gauss, uh, we have only this. Uh, phonon uh, mode softening. You see, it goes at M and L. It goes down this uh, this mode. But here, for small the Gauss, five times smaller, we see the progress of this softening. Uh, by the way, we have this thing bigger. Yeah, like this and this. So it's also some kind of instability, but it shouldn't be there. It means that uh, uh, the the accuracy wasn't enough. Um. Uh, the the most interesting thing here, you see that for M, this instability, it this softening, it increased and it goes. It was like uh, uh, ten uh, gigahertz, yeah, and then it moves to like seventy five gigahertz. Here it moves from like hundred or ninety gigahertz something like this to almost fifty, so it increased. But here it's something really really strange. Uh, it goes to the mine to minus. Uh, we have this zero, uh, and it goes under under zero level. So how can you uh, exp explain this? So what what's your ideas? What happened? What happens to the structure? So what? Uh, why this model goes to the to the imaginary models? This is omega squared. Yes, it can be only real, but we have imaginary models. Imaginary models here. For minus fifteen, minus fifteen gigahertz. Yeah, yeah, it's for small. It's for small the Gauss. Five times smaller, and we see we see here uh, that this softening begins. This softening begins, and here we see the progress, and it goes down, goes really to imaginary models. So what can it mean? That, that's why it calls con anomaly because <laughs> that should be there. This this uh, uh, minus uh, uh, this imaginary frequencies they shouldn't be there. It's like some division by zero error. Yeah, it's division by zero error. 
but not uh, in a, a sense of creation, in, but in sense of nature. <laughs> That's why it's called anomaly. It calls anomaly. So maybe you have, uh, maybe or see Feder, you have some ideas what happens when uh, this uh, uh, model goes down, goes to imaginary models. Uh, all other things are the same. You see, this models, this models are the same. Yeah, uh, only only this model changes. And uh, this thing uh, calls con anomaly. So uh, now I have uh, some uh, small theory introduction. So this thing calls con anomaly. We should uh, dive into the nature of. Uh, uh, charge density wave. Maybe you remember uh, when we discussed uh, Cilium 2, uh, I showed you some interesting things. So we, we, uh, I showed you the slide uh, last term when we uh, discussed charge density wave and we, when we uh, have built uh, this Fermi, Fermi surface uh, uh, 3D plot. So, and I told you that uh, we have Cilium uh, 2, we have this small uh, unit cell yeah, it's one atom and another atom. Yeah, and then we uh, translate it, and we have we can have bigger unit cell. But uh, something happens uh, at temperature to two hundred kelvins. Uh, it means a charge density wave transition. So it means that we have uh, is the temperature above CGV transition. We have this uh, charge this. Uh, Unit cell. We, we have our common structure with three atoms in the unit cell, titanium, serum two, hexagonal structure, and so on. But below the stem, so CDV 200 Kelvin, uh, it changes to this huge supercell. It means here we have two cells, here we have two cells, and the atoms they are slightly slightly moved. You see this uh, this arrows they show us uh, in which direction this uh, uh, so I have a few papers about this thing and this uh, this uh, this uh, displacement they are really super small it's like zero point zero five angstrom so you you will not see it uh, by your eye if you will uh, take the structure in, in Vesta. You should only uh, calculate it. So Vesta, in Vesta, it, 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 this will be like 3.5 or something on strong. So you will not even notice it by, by your eye. But it's but the nature of this uh, displacement, it is. Uh, so, but this displacement exists in the nature. And they create this CDV structure, this two to two huge CDV structure. And what happens? when we have uh, uh, when our unit cell expands to huge cell so it expands two times in this direction two times here and two times in this direction vertical direction uh, our bent uh, uh, so our brilliant zone it falls it means that uh, so this is real space and this is reciprocal space when we are going from real space to reciprocal space, so they are um, uh, proportional with uh, uh, hmm? inversely proportional. Inversely proportional, yes. And when we expand this structure in real space, this st structure will be lower. This it shrinks. It means that if I will, for example, make uh, this cell twice time here and twice time here, this means that. Uh, this uh, um, uh, this pocket, this Elton pocket, it will go here. It will go on gamma point. It means that you see at L point, yeah. You you maybe you notice that at M and L points, this spawn softening happen occurs. Yeah, it's not it's not the random points. It occurs at L and M point. So if uh, in L point for uh, titanium serum 2, we have this uh, electron pockets. It means that this band, it goes down under Fermi level. A level, we have this pocket. And here we have hole pocket. It means that the band goes up from the, uh, from the Fermi, uh, for, uh, up uh, above the Fermi, Fermi level. Mm -hmm. And this pocket goes to this hole. Uh, so this goes to this. 
this green poke, the green uh, ellipse goes to this uh, red circle, to, to gamma point. And uh, the band opens. So it means that uh, see, uh, it means that in valence band and conduction band, so this conduction band, it goes on valence, but, but they can't in the, uh, they can't cross the bands. That's why small gap opens. That's that's the uh, mechanism of uh, this charge density wave scene, and uh, it is uh, visible in experiments. You see, this is three D titanium three D. That's uh, selenium four four uh, four p, uh, and it goes this goes here. So this band goes on this band, and then it. Well, um, maybe I can read. I can, uh, uh, uh yeah, this, yeah, you see how it should be. So this goes here and this goes down because, if, uh, they can't, uh, cross into cross. That's why something should happen to open the gap. So the mechanism why this gap opens, uh, it's under discussion. So it, it can be some, uh, um, uh, many um, it can be many part some many particle interactions, um, excitons or so on. And uh, under uh, tem uh, so under this temp two hundred Kelvin temperature, it goes down. Yeah. So uh, this this uh, this charge density wave structure occurs. And what if uh, we go we are going to this. Uh, uh, Point dispersion. Yeah. What have you seen? You seen that at zero point zero zero one uh, Rydberg, the Gauss it goes to the minus. Yeah. And here uh, at zero point zero zero five it was plus. Um, this Rydbergs. So it's what is Rydberg? What is it's energy of ionization of uh, uh, hydrogen. Yeah. So we can. Transform it to Kelvin to temperature. We can uh, transfer it to Elton volt and to Kelvin. And you see that 0 0.05 Rydberg it corresponds to 700 or almost 800 Kelvin, but 0 0.001 corresponds to 158 Kelvin. What happens at this rate of uh, 200 Kelvins? Yeah, charge density wave transition. Uh, what does it mean? It means that. Uh, our structure with three atoms in unit cell became instability, insta instable, and it want to create to uh, create the super cell. So this the atoms moves uh, to create the uh, so uh, th that's why we have this imaginary models. This imaginary models. It means that uh, in this direction our structure is in instable. At this temperature, at like 158 uh, uh, Kelvin temperature, so it's unstable, and it um, it's some indicator of this CDV phase. If we have this uh, con anomaly, this uh, phonon uh, dispersion softening, uh, it indicates that that our structure is unstable, and to make it stable again, <laughs> make the structure stable again, uh, we had to. Uh, do something with these atoms. We have move atoms. In what direction? We see the direction, L direction. So gamma L. So this or this gamma M or gamma L direction, and we have to move them in this direction. When we do it, uh, we uh, create supercell. It and it became stable again. That's that's uh, the nature uh, of this con anomaly. It indicates us the CDV transition, highly likely. Can you please repeat what do you mean when we are going from L to M? We are creating supercell. What do you mean? Uh, it means uh, you see um, when I uh, expand the supercell to two times here, I I had to uh, this I, I had to make it two times lower. Yeah, in, and it uh, means that this L dot will go to gamma if I will do it. It's just ge geometry. So, and uh, it shows us that in this L point, something interesting will happen. So it means that L point goes to gamma point. Yeah, and uh, we, know this we know this direction in the brilliant zone. 
we, we now we can say uh, what direction we sh in what direction we should move the atoms in real space to get the, to get it. So we we can say that uh, this direction. I think yeah. I think this direction. So um, we we know this direction yeah in reciprocal space. It should be gamma l direction. And then we can say that yeah, this gamma l direction means that in real space we should make this moves of the atoms and everything will be okay. So this, the structure will be stable again. And uh, usually people are looking for the CDB phases, uh, hunting for this con anomalies. If they have this con anomaly, uh, then they now the direction in which they had to change the atoms, the atom orders, to to get the, this stable structure, and they get this huge supercell. And um, what about this temperature? So yes, this the Gauss temperature. It's not like actual temperature. So uh, what happens when we hit the structure? It the, the atoms begin to move faster and faster. Yeah, uh, but here they don't they don't move, and it's some it's some kind of uh, let's say simulation. Yeah. So uh, what happens to electrons? The electrons begin to also move. And when we increase the uh, the Gauss, uh, our bands they broadening, and we can say that yeah, in some very very um, root way, this will be like increasing of the temperature. Yeah, and in this way we simulate this increasing of the temperature, and you see that it's uh, uh, this calculation. Uh, so I reproduce it for uh, I, and then we are together. We reproduced this. For 005, 798, and 158. Uh, uh, Kelvin uh, for Fermi Dirac medium. Yeah. But in this uh, it's physical review B paper 2015, uh, 2015, they also made the calculation for uh, another uh, smin factors like mass fast cell Paxton, Gaussian, and Mazari van der Bint. And I propose you to take it as homework. To take uh, uh, one of these uh, uh, smearing factors, I will uh, propose then you in uh, our Telegram chat uh, what what to take, and uh, make calculation for 0 0.005 and 001, and to see what will happen. Um, they should be uh, different in some ways. So it, they are. Uh, it is also. So if if we want to simulate the temperature with this the Gauss, um, it also so it's very um, sensible to uh, method in, in which we in which we simulate this temperature. So it will be Gaussian method or mass facel Paxton. I mass facel. I really it's really hard for me to to say it. And Mazari van der Bilt, yeah. Uh, so they will be. Uh, Different these things. What is your spoiler to ask? Uh, this one to the gym battle. Mm? What is your spoiler to ask? Uh, ah, uh, this guys, that... this guys tells that Fermi Dirac smearing is the best for this. So you see here in this paper, they also they they ma making this movements of the atoms. They say, yeah, we take this instability. They we uh, that's why we have to move the atoms and we'll get. They... Artificially displace them, or... uh, in uh, in our files. So yeah, it's, uh, it's artificially, yes, by hands. Yeah, you should uh, ch change it by hands, and then you will see that it became stable. This the structure begins st stable again, and they they made it all with uh, quantum espresso. So I took uh, uh, you see they they uh, also used four four and two Q points. They call it K point grid, but it's our Q points. Yeah, but they used uh, more uh, key points for relaxation. So we used 12, 12, 6, just to spare uh, the time. They used uh, they used more. They used like uh, uh, 16, 16, 8, and even 24, 24, 12 key points. Mm -hmm. So it increases the time of calculation, but maybe these guys have uh, enough researches, I think, for just for our uh, case, it's uh, okay. Twelve, twelve, six. But uh, you see, they they uh, plots they are good, good at this point. Yeah, this at zero point. Uh, but our 
spots they are slightly ugly at this point at this point it means that it was not enough accuracy in uh, in my calculation in my when i do this calculation you if you have like a week to calculate it you can increase the accuracy you can you can try to avoid this uh i think it's because because of keep cup point grid at, at the real say at sf cycle and because um also because of uh, um no uh, maybe cutoffs but i think that maybe this threshold so if i for example i will use minus 14 or minus 16 I think, but it will increase a lot the calculation time because it affects on each uh, SF cycle inside this uh, inside the uh, um, this phonon calculation. So this is the physics uh, behind this uh, uh, anomaly. So when we see such an amount thing, yeah. So we we can't have imaginary frequencies because frequency is something real it's a number of frequencies so we can have like minus e frequencies so if we see that it means something wrong with our structure for titanium serum 2 it means that we had to change it in some direction to uh, create a more stable cdv form it's some uh, uh, so this is connection of uh, con anomaly and uh, I think that titanium serum 2 is very interesting material. That's why we are uh, working with it, uh, uh, so it intensively. So we, it's like our short, uh, maybe uh, laboratory work dedicated to titanium serum 2. You also calculate titanium teur 2, and it's also interesting to calculate titanium teur 2. But I will spoiler that for tit titanium teur 2, you will not see this anomaly because titanium teur 2 don't have CDV fuzz. So we change selenium teur is a valent substitution but we don't have uh, don't have such interesting uh such interest interesting physical phenomena uh, it's not obvious uh, how how they actually calculated the displacement of the structure of the atoms they need to have in order to make the structure stable. i think i think it was like uh, they tried few uh, distances and see the best See, see the lowest energy maybe so it's we, we don't we don't know the uh module of the displacement so we don't know the uh in in what distance we, sh we should display the atom yeah. we we just know the direction that's why we should try different directions and, ch and change it ah. it's it's some kind of juvelier work with uh, uh, and these displacements they are really really small so they they show it with this uh, uh, with the arrows, but without arrows you will see nothing because they are like I don't know hundreds times smaller than uh, a or b uh, uh, largest constant. Question. Uh, in the presentation, is this so the experimental other steps of this? this uh lower is for uh this is for uh gamma point from this uh, this is gamma point this is m point here you see the, in, in m point it's like uh electron pocket in gamma point it's like this valence band goes and you see how if they show how it goes down yeah this is valence band it was here 250 yeah this and then it goes down it becomes this and we maybe see something but maybe don't see something because it's it's very tiny effect yeah it's just uh, how how they how we can measure it is this how we can get it this is con anomaly but of course uh, uh these guys uh they made a huge job of course uh, because you see um they took different smearing it's like zero zero five smear and ten times more they took they made different mean and see what happened and for each of this each of this this is a phone calculation rather rather huge yeah this have a lot of or oh, maybe they had a lot of time yeah 
Yeah, but it's interesting uh, some kind of methodological uh, paper. They also took LDA uh, per in form of Perdue Zunger. They showed it like uh, key points, and they sh show that uh, maybe LDA is not enough to get this anomaly. So LDA is not not good to get the anomaly, but uh, VGA with Fermi Dirac is okay. So I think now we should finish our uh, seminar because there will be conference here and uh, then I will write you homework and maybe uh, next time we will uh, continue this uh, this topic. So thank you for attention and uh, bye.